After you've set the date and time and any regional settings. The next step is to teach the controller which devices are connected on the devices menu. This is also the first step to configuring the flow monitoring setup. Pump master valve. Most commercial installations have at least one pump master valve output. The ACC2 can have up to six. In a basic system, we'll set up one to start. First, tell it where the PMV will be connected. If you are using one of the three included PMV terminals on the power supply board, just set the location to controller. If the PMV will be operated by a decoder, select the decoder module slot where the PMV decoder will be connected. Then select normally closed or normally open. This is actually a function of the valve itself, so we are just telling the controller what it is. Normally closed is the more common choice, but there are definitely uses for normally open. Set the PMV off delay if you choose. The default setting of 15 seconds is good for most applications. It just means the PMV output will remain active for 15 seconds after a valve that calls for it has turned off, so system pressure can stay on for the next valve. If you will have more than one PMV, use the next PMV button to advance through them all and configure each one. Flow sensors. Many commercial projects have one or more flow sensors. The ACC2 can have up to six. So we'll set one up to get started with flow. To do this, we'll need to tell it the key information about the sensor. From the list, you can change from none to either hunter or other. Just like the PMB setting, we first have to tell the controller the location of the flow sensor. If you are using one of the three included flow sensor inputs on the power supply board, just leave it set to controller. If the flow sensor will be connected via an ICD send sensor decoder on the two wire path, change the location to the decoder module that will be making that connection. If you are connecting to a sensor decoder, you must then also specify the sensor decoder address. Sensor decoders have two ports, A and B but flow sensors can only be connected to port A. Then we can calibrate the controller for the sensor correctly. The Hunter list is pre-configured for Hunter sensors, so you can just pick the model number off the list. If you are using the wireless Hunter WFS sensor, check the wireless box. That's all you'll have to do. The other list has options to configure many different compatible sensors. Change the location to the decoder module that will be making that connection. The first step is to choose either K-factor type or pulse type. This information is in the flow sensor manufacturer's documentation. It may seem like a subtle difference, but it is very important for accuracy to choose correctly. For K-factor type sensors, consult the documentation for the correct settings based on your pipe type and diameter and enter those values. Some sensors may leave the offset at zero. For the pulse type, consult the documentation to enter the amount of flow represented by a single click in your application. Be sure to enter whether this value means gallons or liters. You can then use the next sensor to advance and configure any other flow sensors you need. Solar Sync The Hunter Solar Sync is a smart climate sensor that can adjust irrigation for local climate conditions to maximize water savings and plant health. It also provides the rain and freeze shut off that every automatic irrigation controller should have. If you'll be using a solar sink, first click the enable box. The solar sink settings will appear, so you can customize it for your region and preferences. Look in the solar sink manual for the region setting that is appropriate for you and set the water adjustment factor. Most customers start with a factor of 5 and observe the results. It can set anywhere from 1 to 10, depending on various factors in the landscape, to have a little more or less watering. You can also specify a delay period of from 1 to 250 days before the solar sink begins adjusting automatically. This is useful when establishing new landscapes. You can enter a percentage adjustment for the system to use for the specified number of days before the automatic adjustments begin, so you don't have to remember to do it later when the delay period is over. 
the sensor will automatically begin making adjustments for climate conditions. If you want to use the solar sink to shut off irrigation and rain or freezing conditions, be sure to go to the sensor response menu to enter this important information. Click sensors. There are many kinds of click sensors, and the most common is a simple rain shutoff switch. An ACC2 can accept up to three click sensors, and we must tell it how each sensor works. Click the Enable box to configure the sensor. Select Normally Open or Normally Closed. All 100 click sensors are normally closed and open the connection on alarm. Some aftermarket sensors may be normally open, however, and close on alarm. Consult the sensor documentation to determine which type you have and check the box accordingly. Finally, just as with pump master valves and flow sensors, select the location of the sensor. If it is wired directly to the controller power supply board terminals, set it to controller. If it will be connected via ICD send sensor decoder, select the decoder module to which it will be connected. If you are using a sensor decoder, note there are two ports on each ICD send. You must pick port A or B, depending on where the sensor is connected. A click sensor may be added to either port, but flow sensors can only be added to port A. Sensor response. The final step for both solar sync and click sensors is to configure the desired sensor responses. The ACC2 controller sensors shut down irrigation by program. We must tell each program what sensors will affect it and how. At program one, we can see all three click sensors, plus the solar sink, rain, and freeze inputs if we have a solar sink enabled. Each sensor has three possible settings. Ignore means the selected program will not be affected by this sensor. If you do want this sensor to shut down the program when it is active, the best choice is suspend. When the sensor is active, wet, in the case of a rain sensor, the valves stop watering immediately but the program continues running in suspended mode. This means the program timer is always current, and if the sensor changes back to inactive, the program will resume running precisely where it should be at that point in time, without violating the end of the water window. This is the recommended setting for most irrigation programs. Pause is the third choice, but it can have unexpected consequences. If the response is set to pause, it will freeze the program right where it is. If the sensor goes back to inactive, the program will resume right where it left off and will continue running to completion, regardless of the time of day. POS should only be used very carefully for special applications. Most controllers will use the same configurations for many programs, so you can copy any program settings and then paste it into other programs with a paste button. If you have some stations or valves that you do not want to respond to a particular sensor, for example, drippers on potted plants under an overhang, put them in their own programs and customize their sensor responses for their situation. Note, a program cannot have one sensor set to pause and another sensor set to suspend because it is impossible for a program to be in both states at once. If you have a sensor already set to one response and set another to a different response, they will all change to the second response. This is not a bug. With your devices configured, you can continue setting up irrigation programming or flow monitoring. To learn more, visit hunterirrigation.com.